Hello, and welcome to the Drum History Podcast. I'm your host, Bart Vanderzee, and today we have back on the show Mr. Jerry Porter from Hazelshud.com. Jerry, welcome back. Thank you, Bart. It's great to see you, and it's great to be back on the show. Yes, yes, this is awesome. We're talking about sleeper drum gear, which to me is like gear that people might not really be aware of as they might overlook it and not really know to buy it, that it's great because there's there's stuff that we all know is famous pieces of gear. But um, all that being said, can you define what what is sleeper in general? You sleeper know, gear? In, yeah, sure. yeah, well, sure. Um, I guess this is just a term that sort of came up organically you know, talking with my uh, drum friends or as you're growing up and you're like, you come across a piece of gear that either um, isn't expensive, might be prevalent in the drum community, like maybe Guitar Center sells it everywhere. And so you kind of think like, oh, that's $199 at Guitar Center. It couldn't possibly be good. But you're you're like wow, this is way better. It punches way above its weight class, sure. and is usable. Or sometimes items, symbols, drums that are not promoted well for whatever reason. I'm looking at you, Peisty. Um <laughs> They have, for instance, Peisty has this very colorful catalog of all sorts of things. Uh, they put them out at the NAM show, and then sometimes some symbols just fall through the cracks. And I don't know why. I don't know if maybe there is a problem with manufacturing them uh, quickly or getting them to stores on time. Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe it wasn't yeah. high in, you know, what came out in 2003, it wasn't uh, in vogue or on trend in 2003 where everybody was, you know, putting holes in their cymbals, playing 13 inch snares. Sure. And now you have a, uh, something that, turns out to be a, a fantastic find um that just wasn't promoted well or wasn't part of the uh zeitgeist or musical trend at the time yeah well okay two things i want to mention before we hop into the actual topic is the first time i heard the term sleeper uh was referring to uh cars it happens a lot where i believe the i think really the first time i heard it was i know paul newman famously had uh you know he's race car driver yeah. back in his day and all that so he would have volvo wagons that would have like 800 horsepower yeah. engines inside of them <laughs> yeah 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 so that's kind of where i first heard the term sleeper where you look at it and you go that's a little grocery getter kind of car that mom would drive to soccer practice right when in reality it's like a thousand horsepower monster so right that again is kind of something that you know you might look at a snare or symbol and think nothing but in reality it's awesome um, second thing, there's something that kind of that maybe the through line through this would be psychologically, we see when a product is super well marketed and promoted and it's the it thing that we think that that's the best or if something is cheap or oh, yeah. isn't promoted well, mm -hmm. then that's I mean, really, like there's like a like if that's more if it's more expensive, it has to be better. Oh, we all kind of sure. think Absolutely. that, which maybe that's sort of the, something we should shake from our, you know, being from our shake from our, un, you know, what the way we understand gear. And hopefully I think this will help with that uh, problem. Absolutely. Take uh, remember, um, oh, maybe about a decade ago, Ludwig had the triumphal snare. Mm -hmm. I think it came out for 10 grand, if I'm not mistaken. And there's yeah. obviously a limited edition. I'm not knocking that drum at all. It's a beautiful drum. It's obviously collectible and it's made to celebrate the illustrious history sure. uh, that Ludwig had. Now, for some guy, that's going to make a lot of sense. It's not a sleeper snare. Um, but for someone else, you know, it's exactly what you said. Because it, of the price tag, then we've imbued it with... Um, a musical value, which may or may not be there. I don't, I, yeah. you know, I'm not going to weigh in on that. That's for the owner, but no, there's certain gear that is, uh, the opposite of sleeper. It is, it is wide awake where it's <laughs> a 4,000, <laughs> it's a $4,000 commemorative snare mm -hmm. where nothing says that it has to be good. I'm sure it is good and they're super cool, but those are, those are different. That's like the opposite of what we're talking about. Of, yeah. of, of those are like, this is expensive. This is nice. It comes in a case. It's super cool. Right. 
you, you need both sides. But all right, so I know you, you've you talked to some friends, you've put a list together, you've got a lot of notes. I, ha- I have my <laughs> notes, and I, I'm proud to say it looks like it's sixth grade, handwritten. <laughs> that's how I am. That's how <laughs> yes, I am, that's too. How I was like, you know, I did. I talked to a few guys. I talked to a, a great buddy of mine, Patrick Wiseman, who is an absolute a delightful symbol freak. I say that uh, as a term of endearment. Um, yep. I talked with Chris Hewer of Hewer Drums, Hewer Drum Lab. Everybody should know Chris Hewer. He is uh, one of the most knowledgeable guys, makes fantastic drums. I talked for a little bit with Dave Elitch, Mario Caleri, just got people who are playing and also just have played thousands and thousands of shows. Just said, hey, what's on your mind? And then, you know, what comes to mind when we come up with these terms? That's a real sleeper flat ride. <laughs> yeah. So, and then throughout yeah. my own experience. So, yeah, we can, cool. so, you know, so I know in. you have cymbals, drums, snares, and then drum sets. So, I mean, you're people think of you a lot with cymbals. I know you do, you've yeah. had thousands and thousands of drums come through your, your hands with hazelshould.com, which yeah. uh, I will mention too that Jerry was on another episode that was super cool that was more about like, you know, V- valuable symbols and 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 things like that, which which it really kind of blossomed into a whole another great conversation with that one. I'll link that in the description. Check out hazelshould.com, obviously. But for now, Jerry, why don't you jump in and how about start with symbols? Uh, sure, I'd be happy to. Well, I already uh, lightly roasted Peisty. I think that they're <laughs> a fa- a fascinating company because there's so many Peisties that people don't know about they're famous of course for their 2002 line and john bonham and all that uh which is great but they're even within their most uh renowned series you find these um gaps or lacunae of symbols that are just seem to fly away they go missing like for instance the 2002 18 inch flat ride now i know a lot of people go a 18s as a ride is like bizarre for people now because we're in this world of 22s and 26 rides. So an 18, but what it does as an example is it gives you a very quick response and a fast decay and it gets out of the way quickly. And that can be a great foil to a bigger ride or like a, you know, a ride with a big bell or a big crash ride. The 2002 18 inch flat ride is a very pinpoint, precise, clean tone that's really even and it was out of the catalog for i don't know it you know probably at least 20 years they they've recently uh i think a year or two ago they brought back this like they they dumped all the flat rides (laughs) that had been discontinued they dumped them out at the nam show there's like the 2002 and they had the masters and the uh, brought back some traditionals and uh basically everything but that's a Hmm. perfect example of a symbol you don't see very often, but when you do, they don't really go for a lot of money. Hmm, and I think that they're worth, I mean, brand new, it's like under 300 bucks, I think, right around there. And that's a wow. perfect example of a symbol that you don't have to be playing in a 1977 rock progressive unicorn yeah. prog rock band to play. They're really good for singer songwriter gigs. Um huh. It's not too rocking if you're playing a jazz, sure. you know, setup. You might maybe use a nylon tip or a smaller bead. You but know, a you, good universal type. Symbol. It's a great flat ride. I think people don't, you know, just sort of pass over. An, a, another example of uh, a perfect example, really, of a sleeper, Peisty. And this is kind of where I came up with the term, the alpha line. For instance, the Alpha Line, I have some right here. Now, this was like an intermediate series that nobody cared about. That was supposed to be like for the, you know, I don't know, up and coming player. These are 12 inch yeah. medium hats, which yeah. is, they're, they're 2002 adjacent. And, you know, they made an Alpha Flat Ride. Now, not every symbol in that series was good. Um, sure. The power crashes were a little like, oof, geez. Mm hmm. But the sound edge hats were great. The medium hats were better than they should have been. These little twelves are great if you want, you know, like a quick auxiliary hat or something, yeah. you know, something really tight and bright. And uh, the flat ride was phenomenal. 
Yeah. It was, yeah. You know, the, the alpha in general, maybe, maybe Peisty in general, I don't feel like I fully know the like tears quite as much. And there's different, and I've done, I've done actually hours and hours of episodes now on Peisty, but I feel like with Zildjian and Sabian and Minel to some degree, it's maybe more marketed the like levels but maybe i shouldn't be as affected by like this is mid-tier i don't want that i am i've played my whole life i can't play a mid-tier so there's a whole I, dude thing i don't there. i don't think peisty knows their tears <laughs> i don't say i mean they famously didn't because the 404 hats and the 505s were came out in the 80s i think it was a a you know, it was supposed to be an extension or replace the Sinopal or something like that. Yeah. Kind of a, yeah. But the 404 hi hats, their mediums and the 404 heavies are like about as thin as Zildjian trans stamp 1940s hi hats. Hmm. They sound phenomenal. And, you know, they're not good if you're, you know, playing Rat or Motley Crue or something, or, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, Pantera. But if you yeah. want like a thin, wispy, complex, very responsive hi hat, uh, they're not a lot of money. They sound a little dirty, and um, in a good way, and yeah, they're yeah. phenomenal. The rides are very nice too. The, to just a straight up twenty inch ride. Put some rivets in. It's a really nice. It's not as peisty clean. You know, it's huh. got a little yeah, bit which- of dirt. Yeah, which maybe that's a good thing if you don't like the Peisty clean, but you want to experiment with it. Mm-hmm. And, and it's cool, too, because like if you're dealing with $500 rides and symbols, you don't really have, I mean, I don't have too much wiggle room to be like, I'm going to buy this and play with it and then resell it. Right. I mean, you could. You usually get your money back, but it's a lot easier if it's a $150, $200 symbol. Well, I was kind of thinking about, all right, just to... What's fun about sleeper gear is really like it's the it's like the drum safari, right? It's <laughs> like you're <laughs> you're yep. going out. It's your you know, it, there's it's a nexus, right? It's like you're gambling, which I don't know. Maybe I, I say let's do that health healthily, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, if you have problems gambling, yeah, call one eight hundred. But no, you take a chance, which is kind of cool. You're like yeah. I don't. All right, I know what the Pisces Signature Full Crash does fine. What do the 404 hats do? Or what is it? Here's, I'll tell you, the 2000 series Mellow China was one of the coolest Chinas that they made. It just, it hmm. was mellow. It was kind of like a pang almost. Instead of like the big, <laughs> it was yeah. like a mellower pang. And the 2000 series was an intermediate series that a lot of people just skipped right over. So. Yeah. There's, I think it's like for the sleeper gear safari, if we're going to go on, I'd say, you know, you're gambling, you're taking a chance, you're saving money, you can find great deals on stuff. Uh, Certainly, if you can turn it around, if you buy something for 180 bucks, you know, yeah, yeah, you could turn it around, maybe you sell it for 140 bucks. It's like, but the $40 you learned is worth it. There's the education of what the symbol does or the snare drum does and what it doesn't do, what it's good for, how it sits with you, how it inspires you, how it brings, you know, how it challenges your playing. Like the 404s, you can't just smash on. So you have to be a little bit lighter. They sound, if you're playing, they sound really nice. You have to adjust your playing a little bit. And that's its own challenge. Yes, that's a whole learning, you know, lesson about drums is, you don't have you don't play the same like you do on a rude or like a Z custom as you do on like uh, an A custom or or a whatever any of these you know lighter the four hundred fours or anything like that. Uh, absolutely, I mean, obviously the way the item res- the piece responds, but also the way it hits your ear. Yeah, yeah. If uh, you know yeah, if you're playing sure. a mega bell, the rest is gonna you know you might break a couple ribs and adjust. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and, and I want to throw out there, too, because, um, you know, I would almost call one of the the king of this may be on your list, but maybe the king of sleepers for me growing up was like it was like the sleeper that everyone knew about because of Neil and all everyone and multiple other drummers, though, is Wuhan because they were affordable and they're still out there. But it was like a 
every year I'm going to go and get my whatever size China. And I think even then you would get a free splash or something. Yeah. Then you would trash it and have a big chunk. I mean, I probably went through one every year or two, uh, which was probably speaking to my plane as a kid of, of just, you know, <laughs> break playing it incorrectly, <laughs> but, but they were great. And I think they became famous for like, Oh, this is, f- I think it was like 50 bucks or something I, like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you got free soup with it. <laughs> you it was totally free soup. <laughs> you'd eat out of the, you'd eat out of yeah, the China. <laughs> no, that's the perfect example. And it kind of messes with your head because we're so, um, bombarded with marketing and here's this Wuhan yeah. that's 50 bucks. And you're like, that's gotta be garbage. But then Neil's playing one and then you hear it and it goes, and you're like, dang, dude, he's doing that thing in subdivisions. It's like, like how Neil made it cool. Yeah. And you're like, how could this only be $50? And, you know, so that's a perfect example and a, a, a famous one too. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I mean, lastly, I'd say if you have sleeper gear and I think this is a, you know, wonderfully petty is you get to get these sort of creative bonus points when somebody comes up and they go, Hey man, what is like, what is that yes. symbol you're using? And you go, no, yes. you don't know about the alpha <laughs> flat rod. <laughs> I mean, I, listen, like, I thought that was, and it makes <laughs> you seem cooler for not caring about, Oh, yeah. you're using a, you know, a 13 inch ZBT. It's like, yeah, it's, right. it's, 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 you know, it's kind of a secret. It's, it's kind like, of, yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> kind of, uh, I'm sure, you know what? I'm sure it'll, it'll come to, it'll come to, uh, to your town someday. Yeah. That's fine. You yeah, just exactly. stick with it, kid. Yeah. No, you do get uh, bonus points. Yeah, you're right. I mean, and also, but also, you, you know, you get a unique tone other people don't have. If yeah. you do play jazz with a 404 Rive with sizzles, it's like, okay, that guy's not using a K Constantinople. You know, which yeah. a lot of you see, uh, you know, everywhere. It's a great symbol. I get it. But if you have a 404 ride with rivets, yeah, somebody might come up. You know, if there's a guy out there, he's going to be like, that thing sounds fascinating. I don't know what it is. Which I think this go. this is obvious that to preface all this with there's nothing wrong with playing a full set of a customs that you bought in a box. Well, it, you know, it's it, again, the gear is supposed to inspire you. Yeah. Um, and and you shouldn't be fighting. You just shouldn't be fighting it. If you're playing a rock yeah. gig, you don't want to play. You want to be playing the Peisty Masters extra thin hats. Sure. You know, it's just, no. yeah, you, you're, you're, you're just going to be concentrating on the hi hats <laughs> and, yeah, and it's going to take you out of the song and the band. And, you know, yeah. this episode is brought to you by Mono. Mono makes extremely durable and stylish cases and bags that are made for musicians and creators on the go. I've been using the Mono M80 Classic Flyby Ultra Backpack for the last two years, and this is hands down the nicest backpack I've ever owned. It has tons of space that holds your computer, interface, microphone, hard drive, MIDI controller, or anything you need on the road. It's waterproof, full of protective padding, has multiple storage compartments, and is very comfortable to wear. My favorite part about the Flyby Ultra Backpack, though, is how you can unzip the back portion of the bag, and then you have a second, thin, streamlined backpack that has plenty of room for laptop and accessories. And it has a very cool and sleek design. I use just this slim part of the bag all the time when walking around drum shows or going to meetings, and then I just zip the full backpack back together, load up my gear, and hit the road. Check out the Mono M80 Classic Flyby Ultra Backpack and all the great Mono gear through Sweetwater at the link in the description of this episode. I've used this backpack every day for about two years now, and it looks pretty much brand new. But if you order through Sweetwater, you also get the peace of mind of having a free two-year full warranty. Thanks to Mono for sponsoring this episode. How about a few more symbols, and then we do we move over to drums? I mean, if sure. you have any other brands like Zildjian, Peisty, Tons. or I'm I sorry, think we, did, we did. Here's yeah. one that you, you know, I'll do a quick a quick list of the Peisty stuff that I think is underrated. Heavy hats, just anything. 2002 heavy hats. They're not that heavy. They're like 70s newbie weights. They're they're not weighing in at Z Customs. Um, I think the Alex Van Halen ride, but play it lightly. That's a really it's like a big crash ride. You think Alex Van Halen is going to be this wall white noise that does that well? You can play it really lightly, and it's very smooth. Um, sure. I had a 26 inch giant beat. A lot of people don't even know that Peisty made that or offered that. It came out at NAM. 
then I don't know. It's like one went to Jimmy Hoffa and it's gone. <laughs> it's just so the 26 inch giant beat. That was one of the coolest symbols we've recorded and had at hazelshow.com in, in recent memory. It just kind of did what you wanted. Cool. Um, any of the sound, the sound formula, medium, heavy, hi hats. I had a peisty color sound China. Jazz dude asked me, he wanted something a little Jack Dijonette ish, something that was kind of mellow. And I, I said, I said, dude, I have this peisty color sound China. No one will ever believe me. They only think it's appropriate if you're playing in rat. And yeah. what color was it? It was black. Okay. It was a black color sound China. And I like, I could, I, it just was living in my shop. And everybody jumping over it, being like, I don't play in rat, rat. That's for Bobby Blotzer. And <laughs> my buddy called me up. I said, give it a listen. Like, seriously, listen to the video. He got it a few days ago. And he's like, this thing is amazing because it's dry. Yeah. It's yeah. a dry China. And it was oh, mellow. Cool. It was like 40 years old. Um, the huh. You know, the rude hi-hats are, can be really good if you just want like a tight, clean tone. Everybody thinks of them as like kind of rock and metal hats. If if you shut your eyes, just play them lightly. They're pretty focused. That's a good point too. Across all this, your eyes can be deceiving. Quick beats. Yeah. J. J. R. Robinson used fifteen inch quick beats for you know all that seventies and eighties stuff. Uh, they're really heavy, but the way he plays them, kind of on top, he gets that nice you know real ticky. Very yeah. clean, which is perfect for the studio. Sure. I'm migrating into Zildjian's here. The 22-inch deep ride. Um, Steve Gadd had one in the 70s, uh, and it sounds like, why I like the deep ride, it's got a big bell, it's heavy, but the plane is very flat, so it's a lower tone and a very chimey, a very chimey attack. It actually sounds like uh, an 80s K. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's wow. almost it's not yeah. a stretch to see why Steve Gadd liked that because yeah. he then played these heavy K's in the eighties. So hmm. twenty two inch deep ride is really good. Um are those rare and expensive or I mean are they I mean that's where that's where it's a gear safari. Yeah. Yeah. That's sure. where you gotta Sure. Yeah. I mean that's Craigslist where someone might have one in your town and they're like a hundred bucks, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm getting rid of my my son's drum gear or whatever, or my dad had some drum gear or something. And so, and there's yeah. all sorts of vintage stuff like that. That's great. No nobody yeah. plays mini cups, you know. And and you're like, no, okay, it's not the most versatile symbol, but it's cool for, you know, it's cool for a thing. They used them a ton in the '70s in the studios. Yeah. So, yeah. Oriental classic China, Oriental uh, trash crash. The trash yep. cash had like a flattened bell, and it was paper thin. You can't find them. I think the uh, the Z Power Smash. It's a pang. It's like an unlathed pang, and it's weird. I mean, it's uh, again, that's not necessarily for your most versatile wedding gig that you're doing. Can you explain or define what a pang is for people? A pang. <laughs> It is a little confusing. There's like a China, there's a swish, there's a China low, a China high, yeah. and there's a pang. Yeah. The pang, swish knocker, and a, a swish yeah. knocker. The knocker has like the you know is is enwreathed with like twenty rivets. Yeah. The pang has like a very uh, pronounced profile. It kind of goes out like that, and 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 the lip on the pang, according to you know the uh, literature or whatever, the lip on the pang is flattened. Whereas a China will curve up like that. The lip on the pang is flat. And they I remember in one Zildjian catalog, they said, so it's easy to rivet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, I don't know. You can't rivet like the <laughs> going up. Yeah. They're like, you can rivet it. And and what it does is the the wide profile, it falls in between a crash and a China. It has a longer sustain. And it sounds, it, yeah, it, it's. It's almost okay, but like, yeah, I yeah, get you. Like it's, a it's a variety of a China. It's yeah. like a China family, and then it's a closer to a crash. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, and it, it has Effects. a mellower. It has a mellower attack. It's usually a little easier if you want to ride on it like a Mel Lewis thing. Cool. There was uh, light rides. Light rides are you know light hats. Zildjian made light vintage. There's you, every once in a while you see these vintage light hats. 
Because back in the day, you had new beats, quick beats, light hats. You know, yeah. and they're 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 thin, and they're really nice. You know, rolling down a quick Sabian list. Sure. The HH sound control. That's a famous one. Twenty two inch HH. That's kind of a known sleeper. A lot of people look for those. The Ed Thig pin flat rides. They made an eighteen. They made a twenty two. They're a little harder to find, but they're out there, mm. and they're beautiful. Um, I had an AA explosion 21 that we were recording it, doing a a demo and we looked at it like we have found the symbol that will do everything. (laughs) It's, it's cool to I'm here to impress you because yeah. you report you record so many so so to explain though for people who may not know that hazelshould.com has examples of pretty much every of every symbol and drum that comes through the door so that's when you're you're recording these to hear the sound of the symbol not recording it to put on an album right which can be modified which, you're, right. you're going for pure symbol sound right yeah. and you know that's what we do to sell I mean I do a lot of uh, online internet business and I know buying yeah. symbols online is hard. So there's a video yeah. for every offering that we have. So you can hear it. You can hear it in context. Yeah. Um, and so, but it, the Ed Thigpen is, is that something to look out for? The Ed Thigpen is great. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 I mean, it's mellow. It's got a nice crystalline light. You know, at, the thing about this stuff, finding the sleeper gear is exploring it. Exp- exploring it. I feel the like, safari. Yeah, yeah, instead of finding the perfect dart for the perfect bullseye, you know, in this case, you kind of, sit back and you develop or you think about the relationship that you know between you the dart and the target and you're like what if they're all equal and it's not so linear and yeah Yeah. (laughs) it just it's about learning education and experiencing it and then you know maybe you sell it yeah Yeah, that's the cool thing there's nothing wrong with playing it selling it and you're allowed to like different brands and you're allowed to like different rides the knowledge that you had i I, as i said i think last time i liken symbols to books you know you you have the book you don't really know what it's about maybe there's a conspectus on the front page or the back you go okay it's something it's you know not it's you know non-fiction about history but you don't know until you read it once you read it that's what you know, the, 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 the value isn't the paper, the pulp it's printed on. The value is what you read and ingested. Yeah. I see the symbols of the same way. You know, you, you own them, you play, you play gigs with them, you explore. And that's the, you know, the value is already sure. there. Even if you sell it and you lost money, it's like, you didn't, you gained you all of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, Oh, the 21 inch AA explosion. This was a perfect example of a sleeper symbol because everybody sees AAX. It's kind of a guitar center, big box store fodder. No, it's not bad, but it's not like your artisan or your K Constant sure. Noble. It has sure. a raw bell that goes ding, ding, ding. It's really loud, <laughs> but it tapers out and the edge is really saw, like really light and crashable. So you can crash on it exceptionally well. You can do a light ride on it really well, like if you're doing a mellow thing. If you just shut your mm-hmm. ears, you don't pay attention to the fact that it's called an explosion. You know, it's it's, it's, it's <laughs> they should put that in the commercial. <laughs> you doing that? <laughs> I mean, that's but that's that's the marketing and the they're trying to get. But again, you have to close your eyes and just listen. Yeah, you have to close your eyes. And li- I don't know why the hell they call it an explosion. It's really versatile and mellow. And we honestly, we sat there agog. We're like, dude. This does everything, yeah. and it's just a regular ass AAX. Yeah. So now, now we know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's some Sabian. That's some Peisty. That's some Zildjian. What about Minol or like some of the? Before we move on to drums, Minol or some of the Ufips or the even the like going back like the Zins and the oh sure well, rare or not not rare but the older kind of no name brands Zilcos. You know? You Zilcos, know, you come across yeah. the Zilcos. Not all of them are good. They were like, some of them are like Zildjian seconds and whatever. And you're like, fine. You're like, a lot of the hats are fantastic. And if you don't like the way that it sounds, like you get some Zilco hats, you don't like the way it sounds, just turn them around. <laughs> Try them the other way. <laughs> Try them the other yeah. way. Yeah. You know, yeah. some of the Peisty Supers, especially if you get a bigger one, like a 22. Some of the Ludwig standards can be really good. Some of them are harsh and brittle and kind of gnarly. And, you yeah. know, that's when you put rivets in it 
And then after a while, you drill holes. And then after a while, you hang it on the wall. <laughs> yeah, you go, I'm not going to use that anymore. <laughs> there was a lot of those back in the day where, but then there's probably some like false, uh, you know, like desire for them where it's like, oh, Ringo had a Zin or an Ajax yeah. or whatever. So I have to have it. And you get it and you go, this is kind of not what I thought it would be. So it's the opposite of a sleeper. It, well, you know what? This, that sounds really good if you have Paul and John singing. Yeah. yeah that's kind of. Most of us that, don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's usually when that sounds good. It kind of blossoms. Um, yes. Uh, you know, the Mino, you mentioned Mino. I'm a big fan of the Dragons. The Dragon series of the 80s. They, I think they were Wuhans. They're, they were, um, they were at the time they came out and they were, they look hand hammered. I, I think they're Wuhans. I think Minel, like Minel just kind of goes and has other people make their symbols sometimes. Sure. You know, like their entire Byzant series is made in Turkey. And, you know, I think the, 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 um, the China, you know, the the dragons were made in China. Uh, Ari Honing played them for a while. They're super trashy and they're very cool, very yeah. interesting. Well, that that happens all the time. With I mean, a it happens just in production across the board of everything. Where like you're getting one thing that has a label on it that's like super expensive, and then there's a lower tier brand on it, and it's the same thing. But I've heard the things where there was like I think UFIP had a drawer full of stamps. There were different brands where they were manufacturing them for like oh yeah l- lower tier uh, symbol yeah. companies, and it was just like comes from the same factory. A but, Braxis, um, yeah. There was yeah. I yes. think I, if I'm, I, it was like if basically if it says made in Italy on it, you're like that's, it's coming. <laughs> pretty it's much not easy to hide that. Yeah, pretty much you fit. <laughs> yeah. So uh, one thing too before we move on is everyone listening comment message whatever find this on youtube if you're listening in the the podcast area or on social media tell us your favorite sleeper symbols drums snares drum sets gear hardware there's tons of it out there i'm sure I, I even like say, i have it yeah yeah go my, ahead that my list is not as far from exhaustive these yeah. are just things that i think are fun and yes. that that's yes. the safari i mean that's a, just my safari everybody should have their own yeah so. absolutely so Comment, let us know, and I think that's a lot of the fun. But um, all right, Jerry, why don't we move on to some drums, maybe snares, sure. some drums or drum kits, hardware, whatever you got. I mean, the first thing, a Ludwig Pioneer. Everybody, ah. it's kind of you know, it's it's that's one of those known sleepers. The yeah. Ludwig Pioneer, you're like, it's a six lug. It was a student model, and some guys are like, I can't play that if it's under eight lugs, or you know, and I, you're like. I, they sound wide open. They sound fat. I work with the studio. I have a six and a half there. And the guy, you know, the producer who owns, it's like, there's three snares that are on 90% of the, you know, record, the, my Tama Bell brass. He's like your Ludwig solid shell from the twenties. And he's like, and if there's something that I need a little different, like kind of fat or like a ballad or something, he goes, I use that, that Ludwig. I'm like, which one? He's like the one that you said everybody thinks is crappy, but isn't. <laughs> like, oh, when the, was the, the pi- pioneer? The pioneer. Yeah. When was the pioneer made? Is it still being made? I mean, oh, what's the? I don't. Th- I, it was the six lug. I see them all from the '60s. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm sure there's guys could chime in that had an earlier. Yes. There, there, there was also like the early '20s models that were like. That's what I was two thinking. piece. Was like, yeah. The- I'm talking yeah. about the wooden one, I guess. Okay. It's like the okay. Jazz Fest, but a six lug. Got it. That's sort of the one I'm thinking of. I had a buddy of mine. Got he it. had a die cast hoop. He put it on. It was uh, Brendan Buckley. It's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Brendan's yeah. great. He, he, yeah. Had, he, uh, he took one of them. It was one of the one snares I kind of regret. I like sold it to him, and I was like, <laughs> oh, I don't know, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Dedamore had recut the hoops from pork pie. Okay. So, and, yep. and there was a die cast hoop on it. It was phenomenal. Um, Pearl BLX from the eighties, the birch line. Okay. That's kind of like Pearl's Yamaha recording. their recording custom from the eighties. Pearl had one. It was the BLX. That's Chris Hewer's one of his all time favorite kits. And they record really well. And they're kind of, you know, they had it. It's like, you, you can recognize there's like Superman blue, like the the color, and then there's like a sure. red one, I think white, and you see them, you know, you see them on eBay, or you see them on Reverb, and they they don't they don't really command that much money, and I I think it I think they're undervalued for that, 
Um, I'd say oof, if you can find it, it's a little harder, but some of the Greg Gaylord snares, you have to hmm. look a little bit, but I, I think they, they, you know, he, um, he worked for Johnny Craviato for a long time, but before he had Gaylord, you know, he had block, okay. block drums, block snares. Uh, he made a few kits, but block snares all out of different woods, like really exotic woods that I would have to go and, uh, Google and be like, oh, that's fan, fantastic. <laughs> yeah. like, you know, you go to, oh, yeah. but but that's even it though. You kind of look it up and you go, oh yes, now I like it because it's this. Yeah. And it's right, like, it's true. But really though, if you hear it, if you hear it, it's like, oh man, that's incredible. And and that's yeah. even the 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 plight of the kind of uh um the builder is like you're competing with these yeah. huge brands who are releasing snares that aren't becoming part of the like everyday common, you know, supraphonics. So to even be a uh, a lower, you know, like a, a, an independent builder, it's that much harder to create things that that become part of like the known. This is great, so yeah. it's tough to, for for. I mean, goes without saying, it's tough to get above sleeper level where it's known and is a is a household name kind of snare drum. So, and and, and that's uh, I think if you're if you're a manufacturer, like okay, so do you raise the price? And then people imbue it with the value. Yes. This must sound good because it's five grand. Yeah. And marketing and more, there's more money behind it. Right. It's like movies. It's like a movie is advertised well. People think it's good. And absolutely. You know, so yeah. Um, I mean, there, there's also famous sleepers, which I don't think is really even a sleeper, but like the Acrolyte. Oh. It's like a student model snare. And then it becomes commonplace and everyone uses them. Everyone has one. And it's a good snare, but it's, it's risen above the sleeper. Level, it's, it, which, you know? Yeah, but for a long time, it was slumming. Mm -hmm. How about the Black Galaxy? The Black Relight? Yes. Yeah. I've, I've recorded, I, as an engineer, I've recorded a drummer playing those, and they're great. I think they're super cool looking, too. Super cool looking. Yeah. Um, I had one here. This was one that kind of cracked my skull open, and it bothered me. <laughs> I still have insomnia. Um, <laughs> I went out, one of the first nice kits I bought. I bought like a Yamaha um, Maple Custom, actually from Stephanie Uhlenberg, who, you mm -hmm. know, uh, plays, he's played for decades with Kid Rock, but before she had okay. that oh, gig. Yeah. She, and then she went to Gretsch. And, yeah, before she had that yeah. gig, she was from Cleveland. I was from Cleveland. And, okay. uh, you know, she. I bought this kit from her. It was a Yamaha Maple Custom. It had gold hardware. I paid, I don't know, three grand or something like that. It wow. must be good because I played three grand. I paid three, you know, and I'll never forget. I bought, this is like in the mid nineties. I bought for $200, a Yamaha stage custom that's made out of Luan. And oh, yeah. I think, you know, thrown away Dixie cups <laughs> <laughs> and but those struck a chord with people. Dude, I mean, they, yeah, it still haunts me. I had both of them set up the maple custom. That's three grand with gold hardware. And the stage custom I bought for two hundred dollars, and it had pinstripes on it. And I it, I it haunted me. I was like, they sound different. I get it. Mm -hmm. They sound different, but I don't know if I'd say the Maple Custom sounds better. That they yeah. kind of messed me up a little bit, and I was like, <laughs> well, I could have saved twenty eight hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but we all want to buy the like. I mean, I, I've always had the dream as a kid growing up of like, I want and I must have a DW set. But yeah, sometimes it's like that doesn't mean it's better than the you know Gretsch, the Catalina mod kit that I had at the time. Catalina but in reality, the Catalina was, kit but, is. I feel like the Catalina kit's the the you know the satin noir elephant in the room. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it. Yes. It sounds really good. And you're like, yeah. I don't know. I must have something in my ears. Let me, I'm sure it sounds like crap if I listen again. But I even found out as I was looking through one of the, like the famous old, I have it here, the reproduction, but the old 1943 or so Gretsch catalog that they reproduced where, and there's Catalina's back then. I didn't realize that that, that model goes back 80 years mm. where even that made it feel even cooler to me. I was yeah. like, okay, that is, it's a heritage kind of I wanted, brand, it, but. I'm assuming it's named for Catalina Island, right off the coast of so. you know Los yeah. Angeles, where they used to yeah. have that famous ballroom out there. Yeah, and yeah. a lot of like swing and that kind of stuff would uh, sure 
That's fascinating. There's a, there's a whole nother yeah. show. You go, you know, that things that are named after places. <laughs> yes. The, 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 Ludwig, ride. The, yeah. the New Yorker, the Ludwig, New Yorker. The New, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. So Yamaha stuff, those, those really though, those, those stage customs, the stage those customs. are a great one. Um, yeah. they're, they're, I think they're metal series from the nineties. Like I have a secret fantasy where I buy for $99, a Yamaha steel snare. And I, you know, I sell everything else and I just play a Yamaha steel snare. Cause <laughs> that's quite the fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's riveting. I mean, you know, yes. you move yeah. to LA and this is the sort of thing that happens. You really jump off yes. the deep end. So <laughs> yeah, guy, yeah, no, it, that I think steel is one of those. A lot of people are like, Oh, it's just steel. I hear that all the time. Yeah, but it's just steel. I think that's a fantastic alloy to make snare drums out of. The, yeah. You know what? The Chad Smith snare, the Pearl Chad Smith snare, which yeah. they sold a gazillion of them and they were like 150 bucks. It, it, no, I understand it's not a Tama Bell brass. You know, it's, but it's, it's good. I remember playing that when I worked at Guitar Center and I would sit there and play it and I was like, damn, this is a good, it's just a nice snare drum. It just sounds good. It, it, it was it, like exactly. I actually yeah. ran into Chad Smith at a parking lot in Beverly Hills, and I talked to him about that. <laughs> and really? I was, wow. I, I did, yeah. I was like, God, that that signature snare drum you have is really, really great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, like, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah I'm sure no, he appreciates actually, he was really, it. He was like, that's awesome. Get away from me. No, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, he was really kind and really yeah, nice. Get out of my bushes. <laughs> yeah. We have a parking lot in Los Angeles. Did you right? pay to get in here? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, signature models alone, I find I've always had that kind of like, you know, oh, I don't want to pay 300 bucks for someone's signature model. Could, but there's there's a whole lot of people who want the Josh Dunn or whatever from um, 21 Pilots. Yeah. Signature snare where there's some people want it, some people don't. What's your thoughts on signature model? Uh, you know, snares? I was talking about this with a buddy of mine who's in the industry, and he said people don't want to play gear with someone else's name on it. You know, they, um, yeah. if for whatever reason, either, I, I mean, yeah. I guess at some point in our lives it's inspiring, but then at some other point you're like, no, man, that's not me. I want my name on it. Yeah. So, uh, my buddy was saying that they don't sell well. Signature items don't normally sell well. There are a few exceptions, but sure. uh, he was saying that um, it's they uh, frequently put them out there to, uh, you know, uh, placate or appease the artist, and uh, but other people don't really buy them. And I think that's a perfect place to go, you know, sleeper gear safari hunting, the yeah. Carl Allen ride. Fantastic. Do you, I had it. Does anybody see that blue Gretsch Vinny Calayuta signature? Hmm. I mean, they Not make really. it. They I make mean, it now. Know. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't really see him anywhere. But I think that would yeah. be a cool drum. I mean, whether you're a huge Vinny fan or not, just you know, the, just listen. The Paul Lime Yamaha Paul Lime. You know the uh, the Manu Kache, which was like a Black Beauty on steroids. Uh, if you yeah. get the earlier version, um, the Garibaldi, the blue anodized Yamaha Garibaldi was a fa fantastic drum too. Um, mm. if you, especially if you get the earlier ones. So yeah, that's fascinating. I mean, and drums are a little bit more like you know from from the audience. You can't really tell if you're a guitarist up there and you're playing a Zach Wild. You know the the rings on a guitar. That's pretty obvious that that's right. a Zach Wild edition guitar. Right. A snare drum is not. You're probably the only one who notices at that yeah. distance. No, you know I, what I mean. Absolutely. I mean, so so it's not as glaring that it's like, oh, I've got like no, it's not an Eddie Van Halen signature <laughs> guitar. <laughs> I mean, there's one like, guy in the corner that you need to somehow denigrate when he comes up to you after the gig, and you go like, oh, you don't know about it. Oh, yeah, right. exactly. Yeah, yeah, can yeah, you get, yeah. get out of my always... green room? <laughs> we got to be better than that guy. But, yeah, you have to be better. Uh, than but him. really, dr yeah, drums are kind of that's no one's no one's going to care either way. No. And you know, no. Um, but I do think it's cool that yes, there's the signature mass produced snares, whatever. There's you know, love them or hate them. But it's cool though when they do like the they release fifty 
um, replica kits for like Neil or yeah. for like Lars, Absolutely. those pull in some huge money. That's a different, that's, that's different. That is. And that's, we talk about that. That's kind of like a celebration, mm-hmm. you know, and, and there, there's different ways to, or different reasons to buy gear. You know, I have talk about a sleeper thing. I have a, I have a DW 7,000 pedal. I think I got okay. it for 50 bucks. I leave it yeah. in my trunk. Like if you come and you want to steal my catalytic converter, you can also get a DW7000 <laughs> if you open the Good trunk. You just leave yeah. it in there because it's 50 bucks. It works. It's fantastic. That's one type of gear acquisition. Another is yes. the Neo kit or, you know, they, they have... It's um, $30,000 or whatever. Yeah, it's I mean. $30,000. That's a whole different thing that you don't want to leave that in your trunk. No. Yeah, that is your celebrating, you know, an illustrious history of the company and obviously the artist and everything yep. that that represents. And the graphics on that kit were incredible. They had all the albums. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's totally, a totally but, different thing. No, exactly. And and another one, kind of going along with you saying the DW seven thousand is is uh, so friend of the show who's been on Chris Georginus who did an episode on gigging drummer survival guide, which was cool. But he turned me on to. Um, the Dixon gear, which actually led to me getting a Dixon little rumor kit, which I keep in my living room. The Dixon hardware, he turned me on to it, is really good. Yeah. And the pedal is great and it's not very expensive. Right. So as far as modern getting it new, you know, go on their website and order it. I am a fan of uh Dixon. Oh, great. I'm not yeah. that that I mean, it's something that it it kind of you wouldn't necessarily expect it. You're saving money, uh, it's totally usable. You learn, <laughs> yeah. you know, and then, yeah. you know, you get to, you get to pull out the, the, the kind of almost like the reverse where the guy goes, what pedal is that? What's all your hardware? And you go someday, kid, someday you'll understand. Yeah. This guy's like, <laughs> why do I keep coming up to this guy? <laughs> yeah. But, but I, but I mean, I also have like my, I have my three or two or three DW 5,000 pedals that are my Go to that yeah. I use or Iron Cobras, but on the drum set that's downstairs to mess around with, uh, I, I would use the Dixon anywhere. But I, yeah. I love the five thousands. I love all this, but um, but but yeah, exactly. The, the five thousand is incredible. Day. Yeah, it's I mean, and it's still go. I have one now with all Absolutely. the upgrades, all the other stuff. I just have a five thousand. There's an episode about the history of the five thousand with uh, Vincent Ward that I, I recommend people. Check out because that goes back to Camco, right? All that stuff. Which um, Camco talk about the another opposite of sleeper brand where the value is enormous. They've exploded. Where they're, they're priced out yeah. of being able to get them. Yeah, but see, that's what's fascinating. Why did that happen? I mean, guys paid attention to their ears, and they're great. Yeah, they're, but yeah, it's, yeah. Beyond, it's beyond that. It's, it's beyond, beyond that, that for sure. It is, but I, you know, I would say Rogers. Rogers yeah. are it's they're not sleeper gear, but it might be snoozer gear. But you know, people are yes. hitting the snooze button on it because you I, there are all sorts of rod. I mean, I got mine, you know, right here, and I have a couple of them. They sound phenomenal. Well, Rogers is, and I'm I mean, I the the Rogers guys, uh, Poe, Anthony, Jeff Burke, all the guys there. There, there's the Rogers group, and there's the Shields Classic Drum Show which is in Ohio, which is coming up soon is in April is a Rogers drum show. The passion of those guys who play Rogers and collect it is incredible where I think they like, they probably like where it's at the collectability. Sure. Cause if it, if it blows up even more then you lose the like ability to even buy them. But uh, anyway, just the Rogers has such a good community, but they're, they're, they're the big four Rogers, Gretsch, yeah. Ludwig, Slingerland, but, you know, or people like if you have like a big R, you know, yeah. nobody pays any attention. They, you know, you hear the sentence like, oh, but it's a big R. I, listen, yeah. and I get it. I get it. It's not as sexy. It's not as cool. I get it. But I, do I think it's worth having fun with and goofing around and playing and maybe gigging with? Absolutely. Sure. I, I had one and it was I played a bunch of gigs with it. It was a lot of fun. And and yeah, then I that's sold true. it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Which is fun. Yeah. Which is really fun. And it spreads to other people. But uh, all right, what else you got on your list there? Well, I'd say solid shell snares, the Pearl solid shell. It, they made it like 20 years ago. They might have one now. I'm talking about the one that came out in the late 90s, the early 2000s. There's a Pearl solid shell. They didn't have re-rings. 
and it kind of like slid under. I don't, I think that was a marketing. I don't know. They maybe didn't market it that well, or people didn't really know. Um, that's a great one. Obviously, with Pearl, like those Jupiters, that's kind of a you know the chrome over brass ones, basically um, yeah. that you see from the seventies. Those are semi famous now. A lot of people don't know those uh, those Thomas solid shells are fantastic drums. You see them every once in a while. I asked uh, Dave Elitch, just I was like, "Hey, so why do you like this?" He goes, "It pretty much does everything. It's it it does it quiet, it does it loud, it's full bodied." And he's like, "I have not owned one that sounds bad." So interesting. It's a That's very good to know. A thin shell. Mario, big fan of that as well. I think the early Craviatos. I said the last time I was on here, I don't think the earlier Craviatos. Like from the 90s, the DW Craviatos from the 90s, late 90s, early 2000s, they don't, I, I think they're uh, undervalued because the, the, the wood's 25 years old now and it sounds really great. Yeah. It just, maybe that's part of the Ludwig Pioneer thing is those snares have had yeah. time to like evolve and keep growing. And yeah. Um, there was, I had a Wuhan kneel or knurled snare. Is this Wuhan? Yeah, I don't know. You pick it up, it weighs like 15, 20 pounds, and it said <laughs> Wuhan in terrible font. That, <laughs> yeah, it just, you're like, no one's going to touch this. And it just looked goofy and it sounded phenomenal. I owned it for, I couldn't, I, I eventually sold it, but I owned it for like two or three years and used it. It was never heard of a Wuhan. It was a Wuhan, snare. the Emerald Snare, if you can find them. Um, mm. You know, I would say D DW snares. Guitar Center put out uh, this series. It was kind of a made for Guitar Center series, maybe about 15 years ago. It was a, a Birch X Ply, an X Ply Birch. And I owned like 15 of them. And I really? loved them. Huh. And I never really saw them outside of Guitar Center. They also made a 7x13. I think it was an X Ply Maple. You just kind of see them out there floating around and occasionally. And I, I have no idea why the X Ply Birch was my favorite DW. I mean, I guess oh, I, that's interesting. I guess I yeah. like Birch. Yeah. Yeah. It just it was a little bit more contained. Sometimes DW snares can kind of ring or be a little a little tony a little bit. If you know, so sure. the birch kind of chilled that out. It was really nice. Is there any type of wood that you think is the sleeper of woods i think the like sense? the the crappy luan you know the yeah. crappy mahogany i mean i don't it there's so many like a lot of those 60s uh, you know that you see them, the japanese the japanese yeah. kits the mij you know the the any of those kits they always sound great um yeah. it's kind of a weird throwaway plywood and I, I i guess i just really like the tone of that I do too. Yeah, the kind of poplar. Yeah. Um, it's a little yeah. darker. Maybe it decays a little faster. It doesn't have the resonance and, you know, which is yeah. cool, except when you take that into the studio, the first thing everybody does is they moon gel it. Yeah. You know, the producer's like, oh my God, is that an all maple shell with bridge lugs? Get that out of here. Get the yeah. tape. <laughs> like, Get the tape. Yeah. yeah so, I, I mean, with that in mind, I do like birch. So, ma maximum uh, resonance is like a selling point. But <laughs> not if you're talking to an engineer. <laughs> no, there's but yeah, there's different yeah. instances where you there would be the studio, yeah. there would be gigging live, then there would be like your drum room, which are like three different hundred percent, three yeah. different places. So you just need to buy more gear. It sounds like, and the best <laughs> way to do that is with sleeper gear that's not being priced out of you know beyond anyone's you know. Well, means to be able to afford yeah. it and and yeah exactly like we we're talking about you you can save money you can turn it around you learn and sometimes you win you know you're you're kind of like you find the hundred dollar bill on the ground and you're like is no one picking this up yeah that's how i you know and i'm like i'm gonna get these these or it's these, like, is this a know, trick or am yeah. i am i do am i dumb because i like this am i dumb I because it, it, i like this yeah i got the green it color honestly sounds, takes you know well, and, and it's stuff like that. It takes self-confidence, I think, to be now. able to stand out and say, no, I like this um, whatever blank signature snare drum that everyone else dismisses. Or even even like the, the, the rise of using rototoms more and more on your drum set. I think that's like, or putting north drums on things, which we all know those are super cool. But or yeah. even using like 
a Darwin drum set or a something or quarter. Quarter, it's like exactly. Like that. It's a yeah. perfect example. The quarter, some of those fives, they have like a really yes. tight tone. Buddy Rich played one for a while. If you want that, mess with that. You're going to play differently. Yeah. I think I think how you said it is the perfect, you know, that's sort of a nice tie in there where you just go, sure. am I dumb for liking this? <laughs> go ahead and gamble. Yeah. That's the message today. <laughs> Take the gamble <laughs> yeah. and enjoy it. And there yeah. is no losing. No. Yeah. I mean, really, the answer is no, you're not dumb for liking it. Right. Like if you like whatever size or symbol or... um. Like I used a 12 inch pork pie. It was right when you said everyone was using small snares. I had a 12 inch or 13, I think it was a 12 by five pork pie snare right off the rack at Guitar Center, 2002. I was in that. It was, I mean, I was 12 years old when I bought it, but it was right in that time where it was like, it's such a small snare. And I cranked it, but it was like, that's what every, that's that time, that's early 2000s. Mm -hmm. It was like, it was perfect for then. And now I look back and I go, God, why did I play such a small snare? But I liked it. And I think it was cool. And I'm sure now it doesn't have much value. I mean, but uh, everything Bill from Pork Pie Touches, I think, is is very cool. He's but, fantastic. Yeah. I've always, my dream is to have a full, you know, Tim Alexander looking brain, like a Primus looking Pork Pie kit. That has always been my dream. Someday it'll happen. Well, I, I, th the, the, I think that's yeah. uh, a more colorful dream than I just want a Yamaha steel snare. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So kudos to you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. There's no dumb dreams. That's that's another thing. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. I needed to hear that this morning. <laughs> yes. Um, what's the most re recent thing that you've posted on Hazel Should that you're like super excited about? Okay. I had a Tony Verderosa VFX 19 inch. It's well, uh, where is it? Where, uh, right here. I had it. Oh, it's cool. just nuts. Is it for everybody and everything? No. But hey, it is a signature, and I am not Tony Verderosa, so but it's okay. I'm all right it's with okay. that. Yes, it's all right. It's got yes. this sort of iridescent uh, color to it. It's very dry. It's got a great bell. You know, if you want something washy, that's not it. But yeah. go buy something washy and then have this and, uh, you know, then go eat a hamburger somewhere. It's 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 fun. <laughs> in that order. In that order, yeah. yeah. And that's something that was pretty cool. It's it's great attack. It's a nineteen, so it's like the the response is really quick and it it dies very quickly. Yeah. So it's great for you know articulate sticking and fast patterns and it, like you know drum and bass and that kind of stuff. But that's the whole point. It's not just drum and bass. If you're like a metal guy and you want to like dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it, and just double bass and a bell. That's killer. Yeah. This is sort of not related, but it's it's. Uh, I had a situation where I got a penguin or penguin, you however you say it, Brazilian snare drum. So I had a longtime friend of the show, Alfonso Pene Pina. Sorry, okay. Alfonso, it's been a while since I've pronounced your last name. But um, so long story short, we were talking, and then he was coming to America, and he said, "Hey, you should check out like God, what is the website? It's it's in in over there. It's like their Craigslist, I think." Yeah. So. Penguin drums were like really good Ludwig copies. And I don't have it with me right now because I'm it's in my basement because I moved everything down to do this attic renovation. But anyway, awesome drum. I think it's Brazilian pink cedar on the oh, inside. Wow. Has an incredible, like marbly looking, like 60s, 70s Ludwig yellowy kind of finish. I think I ended up paying him total US like $150. Now, he flew from Brazil to America, and I think he held it on his lap. I, so, <laughs> See, that's, that, that's not, it. There's it. Yeah. That's, that's the story. Penguin is worth checking out. I don't really think you can get him here. I want to do an um, episode about him, but really there's translation issues well, with it, stuff like sure. that. Well, Odery. I mean, Odery, Odery, Odery yeah, dr exactly. another exa very interesting stuff with the... Uh, just a, a different take, a different look, different woods, just kind of cool. Yeah. So very cool. Yeah. So once you leave your, you know, the American European area, you can find some even cooler stuff. Absolutely. Even going into Canada, there's awesome stuff. Well, it was a Tamburo um, in Italy, you know, that, that yeah. dude had kits, he had snares and they kind of had a, he had the snares that were, 
sort of like a polygon a little bit. They they were sort of like a it was like his own version of a stave. It was like panels. Yeah. And yeah. it's kind of, you know, just a perfect example of something different. I remember the hardware was unique. The uh the hoops were you yeah, had a different type of uh finish on them, one of the ones I had. Yeah. So Perfect. Maybe that's an episode someday that we do is like weird shaped drums. I would like love staccato doing that. drums, yeah. north drums, um, uh, tricks and on. so on and so Tri- tricks, tricks on, on. tricks yeah. on. There you go. Well, there's enough for an episode there. <laughs> or so, so like um, the Taos drums. I don't Some think I know that. Taos drums are kind of. Uh, I would. I don't know. If, I mean, they are most certainly cylindrical, but they're sort of non-traditional. That sort of a, a yeah. yeah, they could kind of like a calf skin. I mean, I'm sure, if sure. somebody wants to see TV. Yeah, unique TV drum. radial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the Remo Mondo. That one's ringing a bell. But we'll, we'll do something on that sure. because again, I'm and we'll we'll present. We'll we'll do our research and do that one next because uh, I. Jerry, I enjoy having you on the show because of your your immense knowledge, and I know people like having you here too because of uh, how much you've learned through Hazel Should from having your hands on so many different things. So, as we wrap up, you want to kind of tell people where they can find you and um, and all that good Certainly. stuff. Certainly. Um, well, hazelshould dot com is is my website where I have everything you know for sale. I, I only have about half of the items up there right now. I mean, I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of symbols uh, for sale. Um, I get new stuff every day, kind of goes up, it's, you know, and, and stuff sells, goes more goes right back up. Uh, I'm on YouTube. I have a Hazelshood channel, and I would encourage people um, just to go there and, and just peruse. There's thousands of videos up there of all sorts of different symbols. Now, a lot of them I don't have anymore, but it doesn't matter. You get to hear them. You can still hear yeah, it. You yeah, you can just hear it. And, you know, maybe you find something that uh, on there that... Uh, you know, you're, you're like, hey, I'm going to look for one of those. That looks interesting. Um, yep. I'm on Instagram, Hazel Should. I put new offerings all the time. I try and keep that sort of, a, you know, kind of fun and light and some rare things, prototypes. There's like a, you know, here's a Zildjian prototype that's like the rarities, uh, dark cool. thin. So that was something that was limited. You know, on, on, on Instagram, I promote things like that and just have fun with it and it's entertaining yeah yeah it's it's i mean and i would say finally i mean you know maybe use the list we discussed today some of these examples is just as a springboard to find your own you know yep. there's but again yep. by no means exhaustive or anything i think there's the sleeper symbols can be you know add to the list or comment or if if anybody wants to reach me or contact me they can I'm, you know 216-577-7552 you can text me uh, you can call me leave a message if if you have any questions about what we discussed today that's fine so sure Yep, very accessible, and um, we'll be sure to have you back again. Um, so I think people know this from the description, but it's H A Z E L S H O U L D. You'll find him everywhere. Yep. Um, so Jerry, I appreciate you taking the time to do this. An awesome topic idea, which I appreciate you coming sure. up with, because that's how I just think it's good to have something. This is what we're going to talk about. We talk about it. We we get it in there, and then people can comment their sleep. I think everyone probably has at least one, even if it's a Wuhan, even if it's a some certain i like a six inch you know a custom splash speaking from experience i used to love that having that little tiny splash and you weren't but, dumb for uh, liking it <laughs> i was not dumb for liking that it's <laughs> taken 20 years to hear that but um so uh anyway jerry i appreciate you being here man and thank you so much for your time and uh and i'm we'll, we'll do it again absolutely uh, with the weird shaped drum it is my pleasure being here and you provide such a wonderful service to the entire drumming community all over the world so thank you awesome. for having me. Thank and uh, on behalf of all the listeners, of course, we love the show. Thank you, Jerry.